ever wondered how balconies, cranes, and aircraft wings resist loading? They use cantilever beam principles to remain stable. A cantilever beam is fully fixed at one end and free at the other end. Today, you will learn how to model a cantilever beam in Abacus and how to interpret results for better structural design. Cantilever beams are used in buildings, bridges, cranes, shelves, signboards, diving boards, and aircraft wings. In this tutorial, you will learn how to model a cantilever beam. I have taken this example from Abacus documentation manual, but I will go one step further to see how do we interpret results and how to model this beam not only in three dimensions but in one dimensions as well and what are practical design implications when it comes to cantilever beams this is the example this is a 200 millimeter beam with 0.5 mpa pressure loading applied and young's modulus is 209 gigapascal poisson's ratio is 0.3 let us get started first of all with three dimensional model of cantilever beam. These are eight steps which I will take to model this beam in Abacus. Step one is to create parts and I will be creating a three dimensional deformable part. Let us start with Abacus standard. First create parts, 3D deformable extrusion, approximate size is 300. First create a rectangle, give dimensions to this rectangle as 200 and 20 depth is 25 the model has been created once the part is created the beam is going to look like this step two is to define materials and i will define linear elastic steel material click on materials press ok material has been defined Step three is to define and assign sections and I will define a solid homogeneous section. Double click on section, beam section, click OK, steel, OK. Now we will assign this section. Click on section assignment, select this element and assign this beam section. Step four is to assemble the parts. Click on assembly, click on instances and click OK. Step five is to define steps and output requests and I will define static general step. Click on steps, say beam load, static general step, click OK, beam load at top. At incrementation, I want to see various steps. So I will say 0.05 initial increment and my maximum increment will not be more than 0 0.2. Click OK. Step six is boundary conditions and loading. I will define a fixed boundary condition at the end and I will load the top surface of the beam. And I will define this boundary condition in initial fixed symmetry or anti symmetry or encaster. I will choose this end, click OK, and click on encaster. It will fix the beam. Next, I will define the load, beam load, click on pressure, click OK, click on this surface, and pressure is 0.5. A downward pressure has been applied. Step seven is mesh creation and job definition. First, I will click on mesh controls here. I want to define hexagonal elements and structured mesh. Then I will go to element type. I will click on the beam. And here I want to define linear elements, but with incompatible modes, C3D8I. These elements are better in capturing the bending behavior of beams and shear locking and volumetric locking can be avoided when we use these beams. Please remember that linear elements have problem of shear locking and volumetric locking. We use incompatible mode elements to overcome the problems of shear locking in fully in integrated first order elements. Shear locking happens in simulation when the analysis becomes excessively stiff, leading to wrong representation of shear deformation, especially in thin structures with high aspect ratios such as beams. They have extra internal degrees of freedom to improve the element's bending behavior by reducing unwanted shear stresses and artificial stiffening. They're mainly used in bending behavior of rectangular shaped elements. Please note that compatible mode elements have higher computational cost than regular first order elements. Click OK. Seed part global size is 10. Click OK. 
click on mesh mesh part and okay then we will define the job i will say beam 3d click okay at this point i will save the model and set the working directory then i will submit the job and then monitor plane solution step eight is post processing for viewing the results and i will mainly be concerned here with the deformation at the end or and along the length of the beam i can click on results to see the results here i'm interested in looking at deflection so u2 deflection and if you wanted you can have a look at multiple plots as well you can have a look at this movie as well i want to plot the deflection along the lens for this i have to specify path click on path edge list after i will click on this node and i will carefully choose this node it will be a straight line over here then i can pretty much plot anything on this straight line so if you go to xy data and path here make sure that step frame is the last frame and here i want to specify u2 plot save as disk 3d once we get the deflection we can model it against the distance from the fixed end and this is how it looks like i will compare the results with analytical solution as well we have a cantilever beam with uniformly distributed load i will be using this third case where i have udl and fixed ends and this is the formula which i will use along the length of the beam to work out deflection deflection max uses length and do not use this formula for the entire length this is just used for the end so when we have full length we use this formula but when we want to compute deflection along any segment of the beam we use this formula the results are pretty close when we compare our 3d model with analytical solution you can see that with 3d model i get 0.718 and with analytical solution at 0.7177 which is really very close now i will create one dimensional model of the beam and see how it is going to be different from three dimensional models so model two click ok first i will create part here 2d planar wire approximate size is 300 click on line right mouse button and then give dimension here give dimension as 200 click ok then material material is steel same material okay before i define section i have to define a profile click on profile beam profile a rectangular profile and here the width of the beam is 25 depth of the beam is 20 millimeter click ok profile has been defined now i will define a section and section will be a beam section click ok the material is steel the profile name because this was the only profile that's beam profile poison's ratio is 0 0.3 click ok beam profile has been defined next thing is to assign that profile click on part and click on section assignment click on this section and assign this beam section in addition to assigning this beam section here i have to assign beam axis as well so click on assign beam section orientation click on this section click ok the beam orientation has been defined when you are modeling one dimensional beam elements then you have to assign beam section orientation and this arrow defines the direction of the tangent and it should be along the length of the element now what does it mean by beam section axis system the arrow that you see here it defines the tangent it should be in the same direction as longitudinal axis of the beam n1 and n2 define the cross section so make sure that these values are aligned with the axis of your model next is assembly click on instances click ok then we will define steps beam load static general step 1d linear element udl increments 0 0.05 0 0.5 now i will define the boundary conditions so go to boundary conditions initial fix click ok i want to fix this side 
click or right click on Incaster, it will fix everything. Then beam load. Here I will define a line load as pressure load was given as 0.5 newton per millimeter square width of the beam is 25 when i multiply width with 0.5 i will get line load or uniformly distributed load so 0.5 times 25 comes out to be 12.5 and it is applied in the downward direction that's the reason i have negative sign here i want to apply a line load click ok click on this line and the loading is negative 12.5 once the load is defined then i will go to mesh and here go to mesh element type first i want to start with linear elements which are shear flexible elements and then later i will use this cubic elements to see what is the difference seed part say 10 apply click on mesh again click on mesh part okay to mesh part the part has been meshed now once the meshing has been done then i will define another job beam 1d linear click continue a clean solution let us now view the results i'm interested in you too here i will render beam profile to see how my profile looks like next thing i want to define a path again click on path click ok after and here i will choose shortest distance and i will start from here and then i will end over here the path has been defined now i would like to have a look at the displacement along that path so go to path 2 and here displacement make sure that step is the last step and then plot save i will say disp 1d linear let's go back to the model and let's go back to the part here in mesh i will simply go to mesh element and choose this i will change the element to cubic element click ok i will create another job beam 1d cubic click ok and then i will submit the job a clean solution let's go over and see the results this is the solution where it compares three-dimensional model with one-dimensional linear element and one-dimensional cubic elements and analytical solution. It can be observed here that cubic elements, one-dimensional, they are very close to three-dimensional elements and both of them are very close to analytical solution. This means that when we use cubic elements in one dimension, results can be hugely improved. This is the plot of abacus 3d elements analytical solution abacus 1d linear and abacus 1d cubic elements and the difference in results is really marginal i will go one step further to check the limiting vertical deflection and euro code zero defines the limit for cantilevers is length over 180 length in our case is 200 millimeters so 200 divided by 180 it will result in about 1.1 millimeter the deflection in our beam is 0.719 millimeter which is less than the deflection limit it means that the beam is fine link to all lecture slides and modeling files can be found in this web link and link to abacus tutorial playlist can be found on this link